Surf systems for boats. Wouldn't it be nice if somebody could just explain it all in a way that we could understand so we know what we're looking at and we can understand how to make a smart choice in choosing a surf system. Well, you're in luck because that's what we're gonna do today. Hello, welcome to Gears and Tech. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new, consider hitting the subscribe button because you know, we'd love for you to come back again. You've probably seen some of our other videos where we made talking about our budget surf boat, talking about how to extract the best wave out of your V-Drive boat or your direct drive boat. And those have been really great videos and have helped a lot of people. So today I wanted to make a new video explaining surf systems. So let's just dive right into it. There's generally three kinds of surf systems. You would have your factory installed surf system. All of the big players are using some sort of factory installed surf system where you push a button and it deploys something to make a surf wave. There are aftermarket surf systems that will mimic the factory surf systems, but you have to install them yourself or have somebody else install them. And then there is the DIY category. Now the DIY category does have a factory installed mimic option and they have what most people refer to as a suck gate. Now suck gates come in again pre-manufactured or DIY. So it can get very confusing quite quickly as far as what's out there and what you can use. So I'm gonna do this kind of in the worst to better to best range. So we're gonna talk about the worst options first and then we're gonna move up to the best options. Now, just because it's the worst option does not mean that it's bad for you. I've been using the worst option for a lot of years and have had a lot of success. But that means there is still room for improvement in that category as because you sacrifice something. And we'll talk about what you're sacrificing and why I think that it is the worst. So the very bottom one is what is known as the suck gate. Now this was invented by I don't know who, but basically you're using a glass suction cup and attaching some sort of a board to it. In this example, we've got some metal brackets and a cutting board that someone's just bolted on. Again, so you're, the water doesn't care what it looks like. It just cares about where you're diverting that water. So first we should probably understand how a surf system works. Now, most of you might understand how it works, but let me tell you, first of all, the first company to discover the surf system without listing your boat or leaning it way over was Malibu. Now, Malibu is largely believed to have discovered this by accident. So they weren't using fluid dynamic computer simulations to try to figure out how to make a wave. They accidentally discovered that if you shoved something in the water, it made the wave go around. And as I understand it, they actually just used a paddle and shoved it in the water and used that to direct the water away from the boat and then saw that the wave got better. Then they started playing with different designs until they came up with the very first surf system. It didn't take the other manufacturers long to come up with some way to also diverge that water. And that's what we're looking at right here in this example. So all we're doing is making it seem like the boat's a little bit longer on the one side by pushing the water out and then it makes it so that when the water comes back in, the convergence points mismatch. They're not aligned anymore. Because of that misalignment, it creates that swell that we're used to seeing. This was actually a really big deal for the surf industry because to get the big monster waves previously, you had to lean your boat over so far that you had the water this close close to coming into your boat, and it was a very serious hazard. In fact, the very first wake surfers were rebels. They were operating well outside of the Coast Guard recommended safety standards, and they were at risk of flooding their boats. And many people did flood their boat, and then they had to pull all their ballast out and pretend that it accidentally sunk. So this made surfing much safer for the average everyday person, and it has caused a huge increase in the amount of people out there surfing on the water. So we need to achieve this offset convergence. So it doesn't matter what the device looks like to achieve that as long as we're redirecting the water on the non-surf side of the boat and that creates the surf wave. Now that we understand that, let's look at what the options are. So the first option and the cheapest option is to make what's called a suck gate. Now I've made a different video showing you how to make your own suck gate for less than $20. If you're looking at getting into surfing, you might want to consider this option. Uh, I don't want to talk about how to make it here because I already covered 
it in that other video. Just know that this costs about $20 to build and it works really great. You just suction cup it to the side of your boat. It will push the water away. Yes, the suction cups will hold up under the pressure of the water. This was kind of the first intro for a lot of guys to get surfing on their older boats, their direct drive boats, and even their first generation V drive boats. And it's a system that I've used for a lot of years. What are the advantages of the suck gate? It's very cheap. It makes surfing accessible to anybody with any kind of a direct drive or V-drive boat to experiment without spending a lot of money initially. And it works. It, it does work and it works great. And you can screw the design up very, very badly and it will still work. So it's got a lot of tolerance, a lot of forgiveness. You can just find anything to stick to the side of the boat and it will work. What are the downsides? Well, the downsides are it looks kind of ugly and it requires you every single time to go and suction cup this thing to the side of the boat. If you want to switch sides, you have to take it off, go to the other side of the boat and stick it back on. That can be annoying if you have a full boat and you've got a lot of people because they need to move out of your way while you're hanging over the side of your boat to stick your suck gate on. So the convenience is not very high. However, the cost of admission is quite low, which is why it's one of the best options to get started and one of the cheapest options, but it is also the worst implementation of a, a surf system. Next up would be the prefabbed or manufactured suck gates. So again, we talked about how the suck gate can be built quite inexpensively. Well, other manufacturers wanted to get in on this and so they created they're just manufactured suck gates. They look a lot better. They've been designed using actual molds with proper suction cups, and some of them have folding designs so you can stow it easily. Some have uh, implemented rotation into it so that if you can't get it on the boat right, you can actually rotate the plate so that it actually hits the wave at the 90 degrees like you need to to make that best wave. So this is just the next level of the suck gate, that's all. It's not any better, it doesn't work any better. All of the negative side effects are still there. All of the positive effects of the suck gate are still there. So I would group those in the same category. The only thing is building a suck gate costs you $20. Buying like a Mission Delta is around $450 to $500 Canadian. You have to spend a lot more money to get into it, around $500 Canadian. Okay, keep that number in mind because it's going to be important as we go through the different surfing options. That kind of takes care of the stick on or suction on options. There are other ones out there and the Ronix system comes to mind, which is a giant wedge that Velcros onto the side of the boat. Uh, it's a horrible, horrible implementation and they realized how bad it was. So they've abandoned that design and come up with something else now. Always the smaller the system, the better. So you don't want this giant floating thing that you got to try and stick on your boat. It, it was a good idea but it didn't work so great so I don't want to talk about that. Next up we've got the factory installed surf system. Now we need to talk about these before we can talk about the other options because the way that they handle the convergence is different than a lot of the other stick-on systems. So keep in mind where you need to make the wave converge at different points. Up till now, we've talked about having the wave get diverted out from the side of the boat and back in. There are two kinds of factory installed surf systems. One would be the Malibu surf gate. Now this was the first surf system and all they did was simply added a piece of fiberglass to the back of the boat and had it inset a bit from the swim platform form and then when, when it was engaged it would just come out the side of the boat. That was all it would do. There was no adjustability. It was either on or off. This achieves the same result as what we saw in the suck gates or the manufactured suck gate options. That does a sideways convergence and that was the first surf systems. As other companies came in, they couldn't copy Malibu because Malibu has this patented. And in order to use a similar design without copyright infringement, you have to have at least three major changes from the original design. And that's why a lot of the other systems, instead of going out, actually go down. And I'll show you an example. So this is the Nautique surf system or NSS. Now, instead of having a wing that comes out and sticks out, they have this little tab that just just extends out of the side of the boat. Now this kind of goes out and down. And there's a good reason for that. What we've discovered is instead of making the wave just go out sideways, it also helps to have it go down and sideways because then as the water gets forced back up, it actually makes the wave taller without needing a lot of ballast. So Nautique discovered this. They actually do not own the patent for the NSS system. That was actually designed by a different company and then Nautique licenses it from that company. 
So they have called it the Nautique Surf System, NSS. However, you can go and buy that system and have it installed on your own boat as well. Nobody else is using it though, because in my opinion, there are better systems out there. There's also the Centurion Surf System. Now this has the same kind of wings as we saw in the Malibu, but instead of going out, they go down. In my opinion, the ones that go down are the best, and that's for two reasons. So we need to just have the water converge at different, different angles, right? Going down is a great way because when you have one that comes down, what will happen is as the water goes over that plate, it will actually list your boat as well. So when you're not moving, the boat just sits in the water like this. As you start driving, if this one's deployed and this one is not, the boat will actually roll over a bit onto the side. So you gain the effect of listing your boat like we used to do. A listed wave is still better than a surf system based wave. It is. And if you don't believe me, go out and try it and don't sink your boat and you'll find that a listed wave is much better than this. And that's why a lot of people in like Malibu's are still adding a little more weight on the surf side to pre-list their boat because that surf system just comes out the side and it doesn't create that listing effect. Whereas any system that goes down will list your boat but also cause the wave to go down and then come back up which makes it taller which is what we're looking for a tall meaty good wave you can get it long as well so there's a few different versions of the wave that goes down now all of these surf systems come on pretty much any new wake boat problem is the price of admission on one of those boats is over $200,000 US, and they're getting close to $300,000 Canadian for the fanciest boats. Now, these surf systems have been around since about 2013 on most of the boats. So you are starting to get some of the used boats on the market that do have a surf system installed, and you can get some of those in around the 60 to 100K range US dollars. Up here in Canada, our boats are going stupid crazy for prices, and they're well over $100,000 for any boat that has a surf system installed on it. Now these are the best. And I, I know I said I was gonna go worst, middle, best, but I guess we go to the best instead first. So these are the best options. They're factory installed, they're factory supported. They've been designed by somebody who knows a thing or two about water. They've been tested and they're all controllable from the front of the boat. You push a button, it deploys the surf wave and you're surfing. A lot of them have adjustability so you can fine tune that wave. It's not just on or off, it's down a little bit, down more, down more, down more. The NSS system, as well has a little bit of adjustability but not nearly as much as these big ones that that drop down so in my opinion out of the factory installed options the ones that go down are the best and the ones that make the best wave are centurion or supreme and that's because of the hull shape and the surf system supra also makes an exceptionally good wave but i don't want to turn this video into a competition of who makes the best wave we're just going to focus on the surf systems so at 20 to $500 at the low end and $100 to $300,000 on the high end. Is there a middle option? There is. And there are aftermarket installable systems that work just like the factory new ones and they can be installed on pretty much any direct drive or V drive boat. So let's look at those. So what we're looking at here is called Go Surf Assist. Now Go Surf Assist is a downwards deployable tab that you can buy this kit and you can install it on pretty much any boat. It comes with the actuators, it comes with the, the plates for the back, and it comes with controls for the inside. They have fancy features like GPS controls. So if you go too fast, it actually will pick up the tabs if you accidentally left them down for whatever reason. It is a very all-in-one system. The thing with the Go Surf Assist, so it has all the benefits of a factory installed surf system, except it requires installation, it requires drilling holes through your boat, which not a lot of people are comfortable doing, and it requires a lot of wire it's been made to be as simple as possible, but it does require a lot of DIY type fabrication and work. So you might end up having to pay somebody to install it if you're not comfortable doing that yourself. The system itself from companies like Wake Makers is going to cost you around 4,500 US dollars. So with the conversion, I'm up in Canada, I'm close to $6,000. Then to get it installed, someone's going to charge you at least a couple thousand dollars. So all in, it's going to cost you around $10,000. Now that's a bit of a stretch and if you can do it yourself you can save some money but you get a really good surf system for $10,000. Are there other options of manufactured surf systems? Yes, there are. Another company popped up kind of out of nowhere called Infinity Wave. Now, Infinity Wave makes this, which is a stainless steel surf system. It costs about $3,000 US, so it's about kind of 
half the price of the GoSurf Assist. The system works just as well and it looks more like the factory Centurion system. Now this one has controllers that you can upgrade and stuff, but it's a very basic system at about $3,000. Again, you have to pay installation and it will function pretty much the same as the GoSurf Assist or the factory surf systems that you've seen on other boats. That's kind of all of the options that are available to you. It was up to me, I always want a surf system that goes down, it's better. I don't care how you get it. If you go buy a new boat, buy one that has a surf system that goes down. If you're buying an aftermarket system, one that goes down. If you're not looking at any of those and you're looking at just a suck gate option, just make your own. 20 bucks, you can't go wrong. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. and We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.